Hey guys, Penny Daily here, and welcome to my newest Let's Play. Um, yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> it's the room, too. Let's make a new profile, just for fun. Change profile, select profile, new profile. Yeah, you can have up to three, so you and your mom and your friend can all play on this. We're going to just change it to Penna Daily. Confirm. So now we will play a new game. Yeah. So this is a sequel to The Room, which I did a little while ago. It is a mobile phone puzzle game from Fireproof Games that's been ported to the um, <clears throat> the PC. You, they're all available on Steam. Reasonably inexpensive. Okay, so we click for the tutorial. I'm going to try and do a chapter per episode, except that there will be two in this episode because the tutorial is really short. So, we open the note. If my calculations are correct, then this is where you will emerge. Welcome, friend. We have much to share. Now, you are blind, but I have left you provision to see that your passage might be shorter than mine. I am forced to conceal it somewhere in this room and trust in your wits to uncover it. I am not the only ghost in this place. A.S. That is the guy that got us into this mess. The lens is broken. Yea, it shattered at the end of the last game when we wound up here. Wherever the hell we are. Right-click again to zoom out farther, by the way. Double-click on the round box. I promise it is not this handholdy after the tutorial. Ahem. Stay up there. Push the button, Frank. Click and drag to open the lid. That can get very finicky. A puzzle. Looks like some of the objects can be moved. Yes, they can. So. Now, remember, this was originally a mobile phone game, so some of the controls may be a bit weird. They made changes, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those later. A peculiar looking lens. This lens looks like it would fit the eyepiece. No kidding. Love how we just magicked the rest of the glass away, so. Sometimes the eyepiece can be used to see things that are otherwise hidden. Yes. Click on the fingerprint. Pick up the piece. A small piece of shaped metal. I should try to find where this piece can be used. Okay, so we zoom out. Let's look at this table. We have three glyphs. A headless guy doing the Macarena. Uh, Zorro got Zorro through the mirror universe. And an hourglass. The Black Widow symbol, I guess. And, oh hey, a small piece of shaped metal. But we also have this. Mr. Rigby, suffice it to say that I do not share my colleague's faith in your character. Were it up to me, I should not engage a man of such low breeding and even lower station as yourself. The very thought of taking a grave robber into our service chills my stomach, but as Mr. de Montfaucon is fond of saying, needs must as the devil drives. It falls to me, then, to brief you in your ungodly task. As you should be well aware, you shall only be paid upon your successful return with the artifact. Should you find yourself having any ideas otherwise, I must stress to you that, while the artifact is of enormous value, it is only of value within a certain small community of researchers. It is not for the eyes or hands of an uneducated man such as yourself. I unconditionally demand that you do not interact with the object in any way. It might prove incredibly dangerous for you to do so. It is an instrument of great power and should not be interfered with by inferior minds. Hey! I disabled the hints, right? But then I screwed up the profile. Oh, well, we're just not going to use them. So. C'est la vie. So if we look here, we have two hexagons. And we have two hexagons. Is it me, or was that letter written in such a way as to absolutely make somebody want to go, screw you, I'm keeping it for myself. <sighs> Snobbery. A strange brass sphere. This looks like it belongs somewhere. Hmm, maybe in this circular hall? Yee! 
I see. And obviously we enter a code here. And, but we don't know what to do. Perhaps the code is hidden in the room somewhere. Well, when in doubt, use your eyepiece. Southeast, southwest, north. Oh, sounds like a code in a Zelda classic. So, south, east, south, west, north. Yeah, I'm rolling my eyes at this too, dude. <laughs> a medallion. This looks interesting. I should take a closer look. Click on the medallion. Oh, hey. This is, of course, to teach you that you can manipulate inventory objects in the inventory screen. I wonder if anything matches this shape. Well, nothing here. So, let's head over here. Oh, hey. Yep. And in the box is a movie projector. And we can only see the beam if we're wearing our mask. Mirror World Zorro. I'm actually moving... You almost have to move... You're moving the ball, not the light. So keep that in mind. The Black Widow. And headless dude doing the Macarena. Either that or just realizing his head's not there anymore. Uh-oh. Oh, good, those aren't eyes. That's the first thing I think every time I see those, even knowing better. And it's a magic d20. It's not actually an icosahedron. If you look carefully, the facets aren't regular. I am such a geek. Hmm. What do we have here? Could it be the same symbol we're looking at down there? It could! And yes, it's an alignment puzzle. We have a lot of those. We had a lot of those in the last game. Just my mic here a bit. And that's the end of the tutorial. Yeah, that took eight minutes. You have done well to emerge from the crypt. Sound of both mind and spirit, though I fear this is only the beginning of your trials. And if this were the first time I'd played it, and we get a tarot card. Illumination. If this had been the first time I'd played it, we'd get an achievement here called Tomb Robber, I think. No, that's later. Regardless. We'd get an achievement, but it's just you finish the chapter. Huh. This is new. We are somewhere in what appears to be the bowels of a ship. It's very dark. Well, head toward the light, Carol Ann. There is no sign, and my patience wears thin. In my frustration, I even scaled the foremast myself. A fool's errand. The fog is so dense, I can barely see my own deck from the crow's nest, let alone the Helena. Regardless, I have had the gun deck run out the cannons in readiness. It's good to keep the men sharp. Well, this is the foremast, and there's a crow's nest on it. And yeah, I thought we could manipulate these. And we have these nice lines here to tell us that we probably want to... The graphics on this are really nice, even though we're not really seeing that much. A small gold key. Well, I don't see anywhere on this ship necessarily to use the key, but we have the cannons. So, let's run them out. Ahem. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. And turn it. And reposition my mouse pad so that I don't give myself gamer's elbow. That's a real disease. I have no idea if it's a real disease or not. A note. 
A mountain, a moor, a palace, a slum. Why not the quarters of a galleon in full sail? With each dizzying step I am whisked round the globe as simply as turning a corner. Will you be following my path, or forging one anew? What sights you must have witnessed if my own experience is any guide? And I'll keep leaving notes, and I urge you to do the same, that we might know if our paths have crossed. Thrilling as this is, there is something not quite right with this place, though I struggle to define what. Some earthy tang of reality that is quite missing. Well, I sometimes fancy I can smell the lime and grease paint. Lime was used to make the light that is hem. Hello, key, by the way. Uh, yeah, a strange-shaped key. If we come in and look at this, it's very strange-shaped, and we have the Triforce of Power! Keep that in mind. Uh, lime was used to make light in theaters back in the day. A grease paint, of course, was makeup. So if we slide that in, obviously the other half goes there. A chest lights up and... Was that there before? I don't know. But I want to look at this, because it looks suspicious. And because it's really easy to miss if you don't. So we turn these nice flirtily thingy bobs. We get another key, and the Triforce of... Crap, I'm not wearing the shirt today. Courage. This is courage. Now we can look at the chest. Actually, first, let's look at the book. It's been thirty weeks at sea, and the crew go re grow restless at our lack of plunder. Though I would not betray it, I share those concerns. A privateer's license is no small investment, and my investors will not be happy without a return. According to the prisoners, we took off the San Esposito. We should find the Santa Helena in these waters, fresh out of New Granada. And they were simple swabs, ignorant of all save the workings of the decks, but they spoke of some artifact of great value aboard, and I gave them a place among my crew. How generous. That handle looks funny. Hello, nurse. Probably not a nurse. A strange cylinder. Well, these look... Uh, huh. Always check if it looks like something you can manipulate. Now let's look at the front, or... Actually, let's look here. Nope, nothing there, but there's something down here. And, as you can see, it's circled, so it must be important. And this is the Triforce of Wisdom. Now, if we look, the Triforce of Wisdom is here in this upper left, upper right corner. If we look at the key, we see that the Triforce of Power is at the bottom. So, by... <sighs> word... <clears throat> By a process of elimination, we know that the Triforce of Courage is in the upper left. And does this look like a lock to you? It looks like a lock to me. Oh my. And now we know. This needs to be the Triforce of Power. This needs to be the Triforce of Wisdom. And this needs to be the Triforce of Courage. And that looks about right for the key. There we go. Gotta get it in the right place. And we have Schiller! It's been a while since we've had Schiller. Yeah. Schiller is the optical property of various metals caused by them having layers, and it causes iridescence or a metallic luster. In this game, it means you can see through it with the eyepiece. Schiller is often seen in uh, moonstones. We have a button here, if you look closely. Well, it's a switch. More Schiller. And if you look closely here... Another switch. More Schiller. Oh, right, you have to pull this stuff out. And then you can rotate it. And we get a socket. Which this strange cylinder looks like it will fit. It does! Turn it, and you open the chest. Ta-da! 
and another note. It didn't take long for us to track her down. We raced north for two miles on the deep sea currents to overhaul her head start. Approaching the mainland, we turned west for two miles to cut her off the coast. With no sign, we, we headed three miles back south to meet her. We sighted her sure enough, but she cut through the cape before we could intercept. Now we must wait for the tide. Okay, well, obviously. So it's north one, two, west, two, south, three. And you can see them here even without two, two, three. Even without scrolling in. Then we hit the button. And a new place. Or a new note. Even the elements turn against us. Passage through the Cape took us four miles west, and we soon sighted her masts four miles to the north of us. Seeing us in pursuit, she cut west two miles into a fog bank. With her heavy ballast, we would easily overhaul her, if only this accursed fog should lift. And we got a keyhole here! But it appears to be sealed. But as you can see here... We can move these things. So obviously what we want to do is make the keyhole shape. And we happen to have a key. So we turn the key. So he said four miles west. One, two, three, four. Four miles north. One, two, three, four. And two miles west into a fog bank. And we have a note, which has Schiller. We have her now. The fog lifted shortly before noon, and there she was, six miles to the south. Rapidly we closed her down, and she fled east two miles back toward the Cape. Now she lies north of us by just one mile. She won't reach the Cape again. Okay, so we got a thing. What you have to do is turn this wheel until you turn. And literally just hold it. I'm pretty sure this is like directly... Okay, it you, you can pass it. I wasn't sure. Just, yeah, let it go. Turn it. Go slow. I think this thing is supposed to be like directly behind you. But, once that happens, click out, and the board changes again. Now, remember what he said. Six miles to the south, five, six, east, two miles back toward the Cape, and one mile north. And there you go. And we get a painted figurehead. Interesting. And the chest slams shut, telling you that there is nothing else for you to do with it. Uh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I did not want to risk my, uh, Eardrum's getting blasted out. Well, the figurehead obviously goes on a ship, right there. Mm, looks like something's missing, so... And that opens... A model ship's wheel. Nothing else down there. Well, you know where a ship's wheel goes. Up here on... Is this the poop deck? Probably not. Everybody loves that word, poop deck. I don't know much about sailing or ships. I know bits and pieces. But that moves the rudder, as it should, which gives us a switch, which unfurls the sails, and lets us turn this. We'll get to that sail with Schiller on it in a moment. Because that opens a plate, which needs a code, obviously. So if we come forward, we can't actually scroll or zoom in, but we can see it says Rose. One of my co-workers is named Rose. It's a pretty common name. It's a nice name. So. R. O. 
S E. And we get a gem. I don't know that that's actually a gem. They're very hard to cut in half that way. <sighs> so, of course, we do that, and another table opens up, and... Dude, where's these lights coming from, by the way? Another note. The Santa Helena came apart on rocks at 1800 hours. She heaved as if the bottom had been torn from her and began taking on water at a terrible rate. Only, there were no rocks. We approached as close as we dared to try and take on survivors, but only one swam clear of the wreckage. He is some sort of scholar. A wild-eyed wreck of a man in tattered, blood-stained rags. Clutched in his white-knuckled fist was some sort of sculpture that he babbled was un of, of unimaginable power and worth. It seems our prize may not have gone with the Helena. I've had it moved to my quarters for safekeeping. Somehow, I suspect that will not end well for you. We get... a wait. Okay, then. We get... a note. From A.S. It is the natural tendency of this world to twist itself into ever more elaborated arrangements. Like the spirals of a vortex at once both the pattern and the system... It seems as though each room is itself a part of a wider apparatus. You must tune the room to find the glyph, and tune the glyph to find the door. All must be aligned, but to what purpose? Am I the explorer? The prisoner? Be seeing you. Okay, so not too much we can see anywhere around here, but if we zoom in on this nice box, we see a twin pan scale. And this is a rectangular... <sighs> this is a rectangular weight. It dips the scales a bit, and this box unlocks. And we have a disc. A small disc. Yes, it is. And if we come over here... We have to zoom out, but if we come over here, we see... A drawer. We cannot open it because these things are holding it shut. Remember that for later, viewers. Because you can get really uh, tripped up on that if you don't see that. Zoom in, doofus. So, we turn this. And drop it. And a weight comes out. A weight? Yes, it is. Let's examine it. It is a weight. A square block weight. Nothing particularly unusual about it. It's not even made by the Talisman Company. So, if we zoom in on the pans, we can place the square weight. And, oh hey, there was a disc here the whole time. Let's take it. Yep. A small disc. One might even call it a compact disc. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm really not. Okay, so we push that there. Rotate that there. And that can go there. And then we just rotate that there. And... Kaboom. A wait! It looks like it might be the hexagonal weight, but if we look at it, we see there's stuff here, and you can turn, and it turns into a triangular weight. Yeah! So we zoom in, and we place it. I know, yeah, it, it goes a little lower than it looks like it should. But we don't have a disc. But what we do have are these things, and their orientation should look familiar. So, there was a puzzle very much like this in the room one, if you remember. And there we go. Now we zoom out, come here, and we can open this drawer now. You gonna open the rest of the way? Apparently not. 
you can click on it. Okay, a small disk. Good. Back here, zoom in, and now this one's a little funky because it this one actually comes in this way and then up there. Pull that in there and that in there. The other way it won't work because the, the lengths are wrong. So let's observe this weight. Hmm. Yeah. Let's pull that. And now we have an eight pointed star weight. Zoom in. And yep. That hexagon weight is going to be big. But again, we're missing a disk. So might as well. Hey. Uh huh. Yep. You always want to examine the thing you were just fiddling with because there might well be a second trick hidden to it. And yeah, okay, to anybody who's. Um, asking you want to by the way you want to pull it out like this pull this back around yes i have played this before i don't like blind runs they make me uncomfortable and agitated so i don't do them nothing wrong with them they just tend to hit my anxiety so i don't do them so yes i know what i'm doing mostly doesn't mean I'll actually remember everything, because it's been a little bit since I played it. We're going to come around here, because you know there's only one or two, there's only two weights left it can be. So, come up. Can we zoom in? We can! If you look closely, there's another hole there for a circular weight. Okay, there's a, there's, ah, another couple of, yes. And the top comes off to make a smaller weight. So we put this nice giant hexagonal weight there. And that goes all the way in. And then we have to zoom back in again because cutscene. And that will last weight. And the box and the weights are done with, so we don't ever have to deal with them again. we get an anchor, a small anchor, a metal clock spring. Well, that box just came up. That moved a bit faster than I had intended. Shall we look at the box? Oh, hey, there's something down here. Hmm. If you slide this, that moves forward, but nothing happens. So, if we come around the box, this looks a bit odd. Oh, definitely. Slide it down. Out. Same here. Slide it down. And we get a small flat-headed screwdriver. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be anything visually that interesting that we can do about this box nothing here but we did get an anchor and where does an anchor go on a ship specifically right here although i keep thinking that ought to be for a lifeboat but no and we get a metal star which of course will fit the front of that box right there. Turn it. And it pops open. Yay! So we got a clock. A marine chronometer. Part Thomas Bradbury Limited. Not a lot we can do there, but that looks interesting, doesn't it? Turn it. The clock flips over. And there's a switch, which gives us a winding key. Okay then, 
and if and that takes us about here where we see there is a switch that opens let's take a look the winding key can go right in there thank you for so if we wind hmm it won't wind up something's missing from that compartment well we have a screwdriver let's use it come on sometimes turning things is a bit funky in this game there's a later chapter that will really make that strange so we put the coil there now let's try there we go now that the clock is running remember this aha uh -huh. 250 obviously the time we need to set the clock for better okay so basically just move oh right you have to move you have to move it here I don't know why okay that's 150 I'm not always the best telling time on analog clocks now when this was a mobile phone game you would have had to hit these buttons at the same time to stop it when they were both when they were synced up and allow it would allow you to get the key since this is a PC get the port they changed it so you just have to hit them one at a time it's pretty nice so now we have a key where do we use a key aha a keyhole and I'm I am I appreciate how the keyhole keys tend to move in the right way regardless of what you do Schiller and we have one of these puzzles game likes these can't blame it and we that opens to find a diamond shaped metal casting not a casing I keep reading it as casing but it is a casting and we are done with the box and oh hey a place to put a diamond shaped metal casting turns into a pyramid which opens up in a way that probably it should not be able to do align that and we have another crystal I love how it actually just puts the eyepiece on for us at this point because y you know so now we have to turn it until we can make the correct symbol in alignment that's really distracting game could you not yeah yeah just keep aha there we go do you notice every time the world sort of fades out and we're in the same place pay attention to that it'll be important later mm. you have successfully navigated the secrets of the ship yet this grim ordeal will become increasingly challenging okay well I'm gonna call it there because it's been 34 minutes so thank you guys for joining me for let's play um, the room 2 and I will see you next time have a great evening. Goodbye.